Welcome to this episode of the Sports Detective Podcast Show. My name is James Williams, and today we discuss John Wall potentially returning to the NBA. Why are we talking about this? Well, John Wall went on Udonis Haslam and Mike Miller's podcast, and it seems like John Wall might be the only person in the world that still thinks he belongs in the NBA. And I'll show you this clip here in a in a second, guys. But he basically makes a, a little bit of a case that he believes that he would he should be back in the NBA, and he believes that he'd be a very good fit for the Miami Heat. So we'll go ahead, uh, play this clip here, and then we will discuss. Would you be open to playing with the Heat with Jimmy Bam, et cetera, and being coached by Man, Scott? I wish. Man, I, I talked to him we were in the program, and I was like, man, I would love. I talk about love. that all the time, you know what I mean? Like, and you're living right down the road. I would here, love just, uh, just feel like they can, I can help them a lot, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think, like, getting Terry was a great piece for them. Mm -hmm. that, yes. Like, somebody that can make plays and pick a role for them and stuff. But uh, even if I didn't start come off the bench, I think I could be another person that could help them and impact them. Like, I, me and UD talk about this plenty of times. And I work out with Bam a lot, so. All right, so there you have it there, guys. John Wall says that he would be a perfect fit for the Miami Heat. He seems to be the only person I said at the beginning that doesn't understand that it's over. It's over. It, his career is over. So let's let's just go back, guys. He if you kind of it's in a way it's sad because he did get he did have injuries, but his career is basically kind of done by the time he was 26. So his last Really good season was when he was 26. That was 16, 17. He finished seventh in the MVP, became a third team All NBA player, was an All Star. And then we have the 17, 18 season. He has a good start to the season, makes the All Star team, and then gets a knee injury, only plays 41 games in 17, 18. The next season, 18, 19, plays 32 games. 19, 20, tears his Achilles, does not play any games that year. He gets traded to Houston in the Russell Westbrook trade. Then he only he plays 40 games in Houston where his numbers seem like decent. Next year, he doesn't play at all. And then last season, he played the Russell Westbrook bracket point guard role for the, uh, for the Clippers until they eventually traded for Russell Westbrook. And then he got bought out. And then there were no suitors left in the NBA for John Wall at the end of the season. There was no suitors this summer for John Wall. There was no suitors at all this entire cycle, this entire season for John Wall. And it's kind of sad because if you look at it, I, I just point out all those games there. Since that 17-18 season, he's played only 147 games. That's like seven years. That's like 20 games a year, basically. If you count since COVID happened, since COVID, he's only played in 74 games in four seasons. His career is over. He's 33 years old. He's about to turn 34. And a few reasons, because a lot of people are like, well, it, it's kind of like that argument. Like, well, it's, he, he's still talented enough to play in the league. There's a few issues with John Wall in his game. There's always been the belief with John Wall that he, when he's playing, it's like it has to be the John Wall-centric thing. He can't necessarily buy in and play in a group. It kind of has to be the John Wall show, and everything has to run through him. He can't hit outside shots. That has been a thing that's been going on his entire career. It was okay, though, early on in his career because he was a incredible athlete that could get to the basket. He averaged uh, double-digit assists, you know, 10-plus assists for multiple seasons. And he, he was able to get away with that stuff a lot when he was younger. There's also the thing, too, of when John Wall was having some of these injuries early on in his – or excuse me uh, – basically since that 17, 18 season that we were talking about that he, you know, was not necessarily the most dedicated person to the rehab process and maybe got a little fat and happy and was fine with, you know, seemed relatively fine with making $40 million a year and not, you know, rushing his way back to playing. And there's another thing too here with John Wall and why he probably doesn't have a team. He, and it's kind of even more damning why he doesn't have a team is what I should say is that John Wall is represented by Clutch Sports. Clutch Sports is has become the most powerful agency in the all of the NBA. They hold the most power out of any agency. This is the thing that happened. Um, um, I, I'm blanking on Michael Jordan's agent's name, but when, when Jordan's agent and Jordan was in the league, he was the most powerful agent. Um, it, this is a thing that's happened over and over and over again throughout the course of the NBA. You don't think that like maybe the Lakers wouldn't 
if if LeBron and Clutch were, like you don't think the Lakers could have found a spot for him like the league doesn't want you John Wall now that doesn't mean you can't play that doesn't mean you're still not talented doesn't mean you still can't put up numbers but you know your defense has slipped if you look at his defensive stats over the last basically since he started having the injuries especially the last two the Rockets stop and the Clippers stop they're they're very very bad defensive numbers his defensive rating is terrible uh, you know his career is over he had a great five year run there. He probably was a part of like the most exciting like Wizards basketball run, you know, one of the top three, maybe top four runs that we've had for Wizards in the last forty years. That's not that's not necessarily a compliment for, for Wizards fans. They probably have an optimistic about those Wall and Beal years until Wall got hurt. But yeah, man, John Wall, we'll remember you for your fast speed and you know, the the song, the dance. We'll remember that stuff, but your career is over, man. Maybe, I don't know, may, maybe you'd consider going over overseas. Or maybe, I, I don't know what your way back would be, but I think going on podcasts and saying wild things like this or trashing the Houston Rockets definitely isn't, it, which is it wasn't in this interview, but was one that he did last year, isn't necessarily the best way to get yourself back on an NBA roster. So there you have it, guys. Uh, Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that like button. We do videos like this all the time. We've been doing this show for over four years now, but we just now start putting our episodes onto YouTube and creating more YouTube clips like this. We do college football, NBA, obviously, as we just did, college basketball. We're going to be doing a bunch of tournament stuff coming up, NFL stuff. We're going to be doing NFL free agency stuff coming up. So if you like any of that stuff, if you like this content, Help me out. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. It helps us out tremendously in the algorithm. Maybe you go ahead and explore our page. Maybe you'll find some other videos that you enjoy. Thank you very much for watching. I'll uh, talk to you next time.